Hi, everybody. We're here. We're together. It's me, Jeff Gerstman, video gamesman of the world. Here with you, we are getting ready to watch uh, the PC Gaming Show 2022. This is, I think, the eighth of these that PC Gamer has put together. Um, this will be the first one of these I've watched live. Um, because all you know, in the in the midst of E3 and all this other stuff, there's a lot of other things happening, and um, you know, don't always don't always get a chance to to catch it. Um, so what can we expect from this? They're a little bit under five minutes to go before they get started. I am looking over um, an article on PCGamer.com talking about the show. And uh, let's see what they say here. We've got a huge lineup this year with exciting concepts from contemporary PC gaming trendsetters, as well as new takes on the classic strategy games and shooters that were etching rings into PC gamer bones back in the 90s. Sam Barlow's Immortality, Arma 4, Warhammer 40K, Space Marine 2, the first gameplay footage for retro sci-fi gem The Invincible, an exciting cyberpunk-themed game, and new projects from Clay and 11-Bit Studios are just a few of the things you can expect this year. And uh, let's see, they've got some other stuff here. Uh, Easebird Games, Wisebird Games, Wisebird. How did I say that? Maybe it's maybe it's Wisebird Games. Uh, y s b r y d. Uh, they will have a reveal there. Um, Half Life Alex Levitation, which is a mod for Half Life Alex. They're going to show a mod there. That's kind of cool. Um, and yeah, we'll see. We'll see what they got. You know, uh, a variety of things from the sounds of it. Um, we're kind of coming off the uh, the Microsoft show, which had some pretty crazy business. I think the 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 whole like uh, Riot Games all all characters unlocked for Game Pass players that seems like kind of a big deal. Yeah, will there be any Steam Deck news? Rob Velocity asks. I don't know. Like, I, I would like to see Valve come out and go like, hey, Jeff Gerstman from Video Games, we are going to let you purchase your, your Steam Deck in the morning. That would be cool. Um, I would appreciate being able to buy a Steam Deck. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. Uh, what else? Yeah. And and then the TF2 stuff maybe, right? I mean, that's the, the, again, I think, you know, this being like heavily focused on, you know, the, this like PC gaming show, this, this PC gaming focus, all this other stuff. This seems like it would be an appropriate stage for Valve to come out and say, like, and have some kind of silly, like, can they get away with it? I was getting like a silly, goofy video admitting a bunch of fault about TF2 and, and announcing that they had fixed it. Um, but uh, maybe they don't have the, do they have the credibility to get away with a funny video or does it need to be like hat in hand? Like we heard you team fortress Two, Holy shit. It's broken. Oh, okay. Someone's PC gamer admitted the TF two will not be there. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, let's, uh, let's cut over the feed here. They're getting ready. Yes, hats in hand. Very good. Very good. Good stuff. They should solve they should solve the TF2 problem by admitting by by announcing Team Fortress 3. I think that'd be really funny. What do you think? I mean, you know, like not that it's here. That's a weird thing to even uh, ricochet to. Sure, why not? Why not a ricochet to? That would be a really funny. What's Valve's next game? Good things come to those who wait, and your patience has finally paid off. Get ready because the 2022 PC Gaming Show kicks off in just a few moments. I mean, I was eating a granola bar. Games, it's fine. Like I'm, you know, trailers, exclusive interviews. Been doing my thing. It's which okay. Means there's only one thing left to do. It's countdown time. I'll see you in a sec. Okay. 
I think uh, I would have appreciated it if the tempo of this song was better matched to, you know, the seconds on the countdown. You know, maybe you go with like 120 beats per minute or something like that, where you can kind of match it up. I mean, 60 BPM, that's too slow. But yeah, do 120, do 240. I mean, let's go fucking crazy, right? But. If I remember something, if I remember correctly, th this show is is often sponsor Hi, heavy everyone. too, right? Welcome to the PC Gaming Show 2020. They're in the lab. Still, one of your hosts joined again by the amazing Mika Burton. Hi. That's a well, fun, neat little like set. Elaborate Unreal Engine renders. We are here in the flesh, as is the hardware, bringing you the best and brightest in the world of PC gaming. Over the next two hours, we are going to showcase a metric ton of killer upcoming PC games through world premieres, exclusive interviews, and a few surprises along the way. And you, the folks at home, might even be able to win I'm at home. a fancy computer if you play your cards right. And now you may remember the last time you saw me on this show. My cards. Quite literally explosively. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which there cards do I need for the computer? To destroy the human race electrocuted me. I, I think I died. Definitely died. I, I, either way, I'm not really sure. It was standard robot apocalyptic stuff. Just minus the overbearing anime dad and existential crises. Yeah, well, actually, what happened to DevBot? Anyway, wasn't he supposed to come back for this show for, yeah. like, Revenge of the DevBot? Ah. Well, he's dead. Oh. We melted him down to try to make our own graphics cards since they're still hard to find, and I would say he's in a better place. But I played Cyberpunk 2077, and he's not. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty dark for the start of the show. <laughs> or nostalgic. Aww. But none of that matters because the show actually took place in a parallel reality. All right, so you're, you're telling me there's actually a multiverse? According to the writers who told me this five minutes before we went live, I am saying there's a multiverse. All right. We're now apparently on Earth. Three. This is a long. This is a long setup for a joke from. Uh, oh, and we are so. I assume it was in last year's show. This weekend, full of celebrations of gaming by putting the spotlight mm. on something near and dear to our hearts. It was it like last year we tried to do so a crazy thing like Devolver did, and then decided this year not to do it. Is that the? Is that what actually happened here? I feel like there's, you know, maybe because this show does have a, a list of sponsors listed and one of them is Modus, you almost wonder like, okay, should we have the list of sponsors up so you know exactly who paid to be in the show? Did Modus pay to open the show? Or is this the game that they editorially chose as like, this is what we want to open with? And if that PC was from I Buy Power, then they are also a sponsor. Let me know if the vol how the volume seems. This seems pretty loud for me personally in my headphones. Game feed a bit loud, We're okay. Welcome to the PC gaming show. Here's pictures of a PlayStation 5 box and an Xbox Series X box. Also coming to PC. <laughs> Mm. 
decent looking beat em up action. But, oh, okay. All right. Did that say 2023 and then change to a question mark? Or what? Okay, all right. Oh, this is the, um... Right, this is the wizard, the, the, yes. I saw a build of this a while ago, a long time ago. Yes, uh, special wizards and tactics, that's the, or no, no, yes, tactical breach wizards, that's... I still have the well I can't I'm not gonna check right now because I don't want to touch anything and screw stuff up but I want to say I have some version of this in my steam library I, am I crazy I could be crazy I'm pretty sure yeah I, the idea of like that type of tactics game but also you are wizards with with wizard powers is Cool. <laughs> wizards. You just cool. saw tactical breach wizards. I did. You're right. I did just see tactical breach wizards. Strategy from the makers of Gunpoint and Heat Signature. My strategy, personally, is very simple: breach, bang, clear, magic missile, dramatic flourish, Abra, cadaver. Get it? Cadaver, dead body. Next, we have a solution to the age-old problem of not having time to read and play video games. Just do both at the same time, obviously. Star Wars Industries has you covered with their sci-fi thriller inspired by Stanislaw Lem's novel, The Invincible. So here's your first look at the first ever gameplay footage. Boy. Boy, oh boy. Enjoy your gaming. You, what have you done? Where are you taking me? You came here yourself. So what are you expecting, huh? You've set up a field camp down there. Yeah. So I didn't expect you to have a second one here. Really? Sit here and don't you dare move. What are you doing here? You're not gonna like this part. Very cool presentation on that, like, title card looking thing. Oh, I kind of want to get a look at whatever that's their weird the space truck is. Rapidly. It's starting to get interesting. Climbing. I located the mobile antimatter cannon. Another one? How many of those did they? Is it active? Dead. I admire your composure. Wait, someone's here. That's a cool looking heartbeat sensor style radar whatever astrogator they're dead so you found someone fortunately such unpleasant discoveries are indispensable to the mission i didn't let that thought get to me 
I was counting on this meeting was very that, much. Was that a like, was. stealth armored been another corpse? Place, but not this. But what exactly? That's a good question. I'm getting into the recorder. What do we have here? Uh huh. They made their way through with a beam of antimatter. How subtle. Did you locate this passage? I'm looking at it now. They pierced a hole several meters in diameter and several dozen meters long. Hmm. I thought maybe she was going to hold it up and match the, the do like a match the the image to the yes, do you hear me? type of thing. Yes. My head feels like it's bursting from pressure. Can you continue? Yes. I'm better now. That just happens. Actually, there's nothing here that I haven't seen before. There are a lot of metal bushes that were near our camp. The lower parts of the bushes are, how to put it, fruitless. So they came to pick the fruits. What's this robot up to, though? This robot looks like it has started its task and got stuck. What task? This is one of the robots carrying containers with research material. It took the container, but never left that place. Something about this well, this character's voice, like she sounds like she's path. smiling while reading the dialogue, like like some of these lines. The robot's gone. And it sounds like like cheerful's not the word, but it's just something about it doesn't feel like it has the gravity. Never mind. Follow it. It maybe should have for the situation. Minor, you know, hey, whatever. But Fuck. It's getting up. What, a robot? No, Antimat. Come on, Yasna. Run. Hide. Run and hide. Fuck that robot. Are you alive? Yes, it's fucked up the robot. <laughs> what are you doing now? It's fucked up the robot. It's going to fuck up me now. Take care of our people, Novik. Hmm. It's time to take a pit stop at the nearest dungeon to prove that chivalry isn't dead. And if you think I emphasize those words weirdly, you're right. And it'll all make sense momentarily when you see these next four games, especially when you hear from our friends at Tripwire Interactive. Roll that beautiful footage. Why is he wearing AirPods or... You? Nah. Some kind of AirPod don't have esque. What it takes. You'll be back here too scared to try again. Look at the sponsor the list. See if I can piece that together. Me, unless you're way tougher than you look. We got the guns, the turrets, the upgrades. But what you really need is guts and skills. Grab your posse and say your prayers. My what? Posse, posse. Sorry. Be the first to play. This is cool. To give your feedback. <laughs> Do you have what it takes? To give feedback to give feedback partner you gonna fill out the form or what oh right yeah I mean if you're ever gonna 
show some kind of F1 manager game. This is the show for it, right? Putting you in the position like, yeah, we got PC games. Like, like, oh, like PC games? Like, oh yeah, we got fucking PC games on this thing, dog. Every decision that leads to you making your mark on the grid. That said, don't these come out on on console? These these come out on console too, don't they? Now, your ability to make the right calls on and off the track. During races, your mastermind strategy. Plan tire stints for each driver and make changes on the fly when necessary. Crazy how that's if changed over the years, you know, the, to defend, the number of manage their tire games you think of as like just being PC ass PC to games to that still find a way onto onto console. Like race incidents and fluctuating weather and track conditions. It used to not be that way. It's for, I think it's for the best that it is. Every uh, of your team even, state of you know, probably. Waters. A game like this seems like it would be better with a mouse, you know what I mean? But, uh... Engineering teams ...and put them to the task to develop your car and prepare new parts for upcoming races. Optimize your finances to keep the board happy, improve and maintain your facilities, and scout talent from F2 and F3 to try and ensure future success. They say knowledge is power, and keeping a close eye on a plethora of... They do say that. ...will help give you the edge. They. The finer details of how car parts affect overall performance, to a track's expected grip level, to the condition of your wind tunnel. How you analyze the data and choose to spend your resources will make or break your progress. You'll find depth and detail in abundance, even down to real-world team radio messages between drivers and engineers, and race commentary from David Croft and Karun Chandok. While broadcast style presentation I want a Formula E striking new car design with manager where you have to run a bot farm on social media to ensure that your racer gets the fan boost. As you plan and execute the perfect strategy in F1 Manager 2022. Reorder the digital version now for early access from August 25th. Hey everyone, after one year of Chivalry 2, we've more than doubled the size of the game, and now we're excited to bring even more knights onto the battlefield. Because today, right now, Chivalry 2 is out on Steam with crossplay between all platforms. This is our biggest update to the game yet, and it brings players to an all new desert theater of war, and best of all, brings us horses into Chivalry 2 in mounted combat. We want to thank our community for making Sorry. the game the success Just it's been so far. Locked in on this double base over here. Best time to check out Chivalry 2. Take a look at our new trailer that shows off the new update in its Nosian invasion. This rebellion is at an end. The Agapians flee. I've heard so many good things about Chivalry 2. It's uh, I have not looked at it on account of. It doesn't necessarily seem like my kind of thing, but like it seems like people who love it really love it. Uh, it's old, sort of fast. Hmm. <laughs> Great game with the chat disabled. Yeah. I mean, what game isn't that way? <laughs> We must retaliate. Yeah, maybe I'll give this a look. Long has Sinosia remained safe from my fury. No more. It seems like a game I'd be absolutely terrible at. Strike out of this. Their city will fall. But that looks cool. Will bleed. Their knowledge will burn. My reign will never end. Hi everyone, I'm Phil from Sweet Bandits, live from Quebec City. Really glad to be here today for the PC gaming show. We'll be showing the first Sweet Bandits, game, baby. Deceive Inc. It's a multiplayer competitive spy game where you get to use social stealth, high tech gadgets, and powerful spy abilities to try and get the upper end. We've had the chance of working with Tripwire Presents on the project, so this is only the beginning. Please Tripwire is a sponsor of the show, by the way. To learn more. We'll be releasing the game in early 2023. If you're your sponsor check, Sega was a sponsor of the show as well. PS5. Thank you so much. Frontier. And let's enjoy the, the trailer. 
Good afternoon, agents. Your mission is simple. Infiltrate the frozen coral underwater hotel and retrieve the blueprint of a powerful weapon. As you know, Deceive Inc.'s company policy is to deploy multiple agents to ensure the mission's success. What is but only one will get the paycheck. Stop. Stop. Do whatever it Don't. takes, agent. And be careful out there. Try your best. Let's see if it's enough. Booyah! ka oh, A little too much, little too much Hitman without it being Hitman there for a sec. Got very confused. And they thought it was secure. In the end, I am victorious. They're really not going to make it easy for me. Gotcha. Is that it? Right on target. Outskilled and outgunned. It can't end like this. Mm. Uh, uh, target acquired. Moving to rendezvous point. All done. I think I just realized watching this, you know, this is kind of like... Really? They talk about that social stealth kind of... Thing. Did you ever play the old Spy vs. Spy games? Uh, one of them came out, you know, Mad Magazine Spy vs. Spy. One came out on the NES, but they were primarily like Commodore 64. They did three of them. Like, the whole, like, get the briefcase, get to the exit, don't let the other player, was, you know, because it was only a two-player game, don't let the other player jack you on your way to escape. Like, that looks like that to something. me. Do you ever have a Which recurring dream? Kind of crazy really to think about. Come true. I mean, mine personally involves a flight of unicorns and a Valkyrie army on Pegasuses, but you know, yours may be different. But you know, somehow I doubt it. This year, we've partnered with the PC builders at iBuyPower to bring a very different dream to life: my dream PC room. Unfortunately, there's bad news for me. I don't get to keep it. But very good news for one of you. We're going to be giving the entire contents of this room away to me watching the show. So let's dive in and see what's up for grabs. The beating heart of any PC gaming dream room is, of course, the rig. So let's start there. As if you you're going to have a PC game room, let me tell you, you need a PC. PC. The first thing Just gonna put that out that there. Height Y60 case with its wraparound tempered glass panels. This thing is built from the ground up to display the sickest PC tech you can squeeze into a desktop machine. And let's face it, if you've managed to bag a serious graphics card in these dry, dry times, you owe it to the Silicon Gods to show it off properly. Okay, the case no, and don't. lighting looks dope, but for this My to be a case true is closed. PC, Some things in it light up. I've tried to turn that off friend. because Luckily, I can't see it. Luckily, matches the style. Um, so let's check out the guts of our dream PC. And trust me, there's plenty of power crammed in. The big question though is what pixel pusher I buy power has used and you won't be disappointed with an overclocked RTX 3090 from Gigabyte, right? This 24 gigabyte monster of a GPU packs the cooling to stay chill and the power to smash through any game you throw at it. The graphics card is the rig's MVP, but any superstar needs some dope backup. And the fastest gaming CPU around, the Intel 5.5 gigahertz. Now that's some dope backup. KS with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM and two terabytes of seriously fast SSD storage, both from a data, makes up the perfect support team. Whew, that is a whole lot of PC. But Mika, you yep. may greedily wonder, what about the peripherals? Well, animal lovers, I would have gone with more RAM. Because the height eclipse wireless headset comes in plush vegan like leather. Because if you're just gonna, if you're gonna buy RAM, you might as well buy. Competition grade. Might as well go. Might as well go, baby. And you in case you get into video editing. Love the clicky clacky mechanical keyboard that comes with it. Or running a bunch oh, of VSTs sorry, or that? something. RGB. Well, of course. I'm a RAM man. It's true. I am. Up like Atlantic City on a Saturday night. And yeah, you can turn it off so you can actually get some sleep. You can find out more about this gear feature today over at iBuyPower.com, but I know what you really want to know. The info on how to win this beastly setup. So here are the details. Thanks, Mika. Yes, folks, it couldn't be easier to enter our Dream PC giveaway. For your chance, just head over to PCGamer.com slash DreamPC and follow the simple instructions. There, you'll find a complete breakdown of the prize, which don't worry, also comes with some very swish monitors as well as the eligibility rules. Good luck, gamers. 
That is right. Just head over to pcgamer.com. Good luck, gamers. Slash Dream PC for your chance to win. Enjoy but your game. For now, let's get back to the games. From Kepler Interactive and A44 Games comes Flintlock, the Siege of Kepler Dawn. Interactive and is a sponsor of the show. The team behind Ashen, where gods and guns collide. And Flintlock was just at the Xbox thing, so. When the gods first emerged from the great below, we saw them as saviors. Looks like their site is broken for the giveaway. Instead, That's a bummer. Unleashed a pestilence on our world. I have been in that position of no one yet knows if oh dip. Kill a god. It's E3 I time and the site broke. Intend to find out. This is uh, this is different stuff, right? Is, is this the exact same trailer? It's it's the exact same. Okay, all right. That's okay. It's got some different stuff. Yeah, I, I feel like I they didn't go that that was in that shot was in it for sure. The triangle stuff. The triangle stuff. That slide stuff was definitely in there. Okay. That game still looks all right, but I, I think, you know, last time we said just, there's just something about the animation looks a little bit funky in spots, but uh, Waller Carrot says, is it just me or the guns at this year's E3 not sound punchy? Yeah, you know, it's always hard. Hey, PC Gaming Show. I'm Derek Going Bradley, through a live CEO stream and all other stuff, and, and you know, sometimes Flintlock, the Siege of they're Dawn. mixing it for the music Flintlock and all this other stuff, so it's not always dogs. the way it's going to sound so in game. As humanity, you now have the power of black powder and bombs yeah, the Starfield stuff was to purported to be gameplay. The I, I could... Take the world back. You'll play as Nor, a black stream sapper. One of the elite I mean, you have to imagine that like Starfield's going to have forces. a bunch of space uh, guns in addition to the future the P90 they the were running around with or whatever. Um, but you won't be going it alone. When Nor brings firepower, her fox-like companion Enki brings magic to the battlefield. You will have Major No Man's Sky vibes off of Starfield. Yeah, but I also kind of got like some early Mass Effect enemies. vibes off we of their to show you more of before it's fly around and go year. wherever type of Get stuff. The... For more info. And don't forget to wish this now on Steam and Epic Game Store. I mean, that's a, have a great show. A good place to be, right? No Man's Sky plus a Mass Effect. Sci -fi that's a game from 11 Bit Studios, the creators of this war of mine. Hear all about it in our exclusive interview. We'll also show you what's next for Outriders from Square, Enix, and People Can Fly. Plus, if you look back on high school and think, you know, those four years would have been better if I was fighting literal demons, you're definitely going to want to study up on our next world-exclusive independent game inspired by the Persona series. Choke your health potions now because there is so much more PC gaming show coming your way. Before we go, the folks at Compass Data Centers have a little quiz for you. What? How much Before we go, is what are we? Data capacity compared to current are they, is this an ad? Are they going to an ad break? Scan is that the QR code and answer the question for a chance to win 500 bucks worth of stuff from Razor? What are we doing? Or visit gaming.compassdatacenters.com. What's going on? Okay, now back to the PC gaming show. Oh, okay. I guess that was the ad. The state two, like that's like what? Hey, everybody in. You win. With the Cody so Rhodes win. countdown in 25 you minutes, we're going to show. Mana is the best <sighs> rewards debit card where you can earn perks and points. Okay, I'm turning this down for a little bit. Um, the, the one press release I remember seeing about this was about this credit card and not, and not about the show itself. Join the wait list. That's how you know it's cool. The credit card's got a wait list. Yes. 
it's time to talk about The Alters, the brand new game from 11-Bit Studios. The Warsaw-based studio made us cry in this war of mine, make difficult choices in the face of climate apocalypse. In Frost Again, Park, it's a pr it's a very upbeat tone out of this world. gentleman as the he is talking about this war of mine. Darkest reaches <laughs> like, of space gosh. In a survival story that is guaranteed to give you an existential crisis in a good way. This is a really big moment for this year's show. I can't wait. Let's take a look. Enjoy your gaming. Very relatable. I sit up like this every morning and I just look around and go. <sighs> and then I stagger over in the direction of the bathroom. It's a cool look. Dead guy. Oh, well, that's. Hmm. Oh, no. There's a version of me with a top knot. I've got to get out of here. Shoot me to space. So you guys ever wonder what it's like to, I don't know, just, I'm just, you know, just thinking like, what, uh, like, what if you had sex with a clone? Is that weird? I mean, I'm just, I'm just, you know, just, just making conversation. Uh, that's an intriguing trailer. Not a ton of detail there in terms of what this video game is right now, but you know, maybe Joining us now to talk okay. about what we just saw yes. all the way from Poland is Tomasz Kasilewicz of 11-Bit Studios. Welcome to the PC Gaming Show, and thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Hello. Okay, there is a lot to unpack there. We got clones. We got this huge wheel. Tell Can us I have sex with the, my clones? See. Well, first of all, these a lot guys unpack. were not exactly the clones. We saw Jan, our main character, who's traveling with a group of the Alters, who are the alternative versions of the same person. And they are going through this distant alien planet uh, in their mobile base, which was the wheel you saw at the end. So what's the player's goal as they're progressing through the story? So you are so a space builder, you are to have sex with the other versions of yourself. Survive uh, and find a way back home. But the thing is, in order to do so, you need to create those alters, as each one of them have different set of skills and character traits. So these are things necessary for your survival and finding a way back home. So from the trailer, tonally, this could be a horror, a thriller, a mystery. What should players expect? Actually, there are bits of everything you mentioned, like there is this mystery as we're looking deep into the soul of the character but what you find there can also be pretty scary. So there are those beats of psychological horror and drama, but then on top of it, we have this quite thick layer of surreality. I mean, how surreal would it be to one day, you know, wake up next to a little different wake up next version to? of your very self? Now, there's a quote that you shared with me earlier. Go Man on. Man cannot remake himself without suffering for he is both the marble and the sculptor. How does this quote relate to the story? So this quote, it relates directly to the main theme of our game. 
we as people, we are shaping ourselves every single day with every single decision that we are making. This process, the whole process of becoming who we are, it can be quite painful at times. But in our game, True. Jan, the main character, he has this unique possibility of not only shaping himself, but also reshaping himself a numerous times with every single altar that he is creating. Do you see this as more of a classic sci-fi story, something like a Ray Bradbury work, or is it something more contemporary? Well, it is very classic sci-fi in a way that we are taking a relatable topic and we are using the sci-fi theme, we are using the sci-fi setting to look at it through like through the magnifying lenses. This seems but really cool. I just feel tools, like they're not contemporary game and we're talking taking advantage of what video games are as a medium. Much so about the video game part like of the video game. Okay, design here we go. And systematic and linearity in order to put the players in the middle of the experience and in the end allow them to create their own stories inside the game. I wanted to ask a little bit about the relationship of your previous titles to the altars, whether there's any narrative or themes or even just influence that those games had on this one. Well, the altars is purely a hundred percent our game, 11-bit studios game, and it's created in line with our meaningful entertainment philosophy. So it's a game we hope that it will make you think even after you stop playing it. This yeah, like, do you, are you taking the altars and, and assigning them to tasks and like, oh, this one's good at stealth, titles. so you should send and him out on this mission and this one's good at cooking and, you know, like, this should be on the cooking station, but, oh no, the cook died and now you have a non-optimal cook at the cooking station and now the food is worse. Like, like, is it is it that? And on how we approach meaningful topics inside the design of our games. Thanks so much again to Tomas and the whole team at 11-Bit Studios for joining us this year. And while I try to find enough Rapidium to make it through day one to eight, let's head on over to Mika Burton and keep things rolling like a massive space station. Thanks, Day9. Honestly, I need to look into getting myself cloned so I can make time to play all of these awesome games we've seen so far. But I'm also like looking to get myself cloned too. Having to eventually for different my reasons. Single hand-to-hand -hand combat when they steal my life, making me wonder if I was the clone all along. Is it really worth it for video games? Yeah, no, it's totally worth it for video games. Anyway, that's a problem for future Mika. Present Mika is much more interested in what you all have been saying about the show so far. So keep letting us know your thoughts by using hashtag PC Gaming Show on all platforms. Now let's get back to the all platforms. Here. Tout, plurk. Oh, no, I mean video games. Friendster. Video games. More Outriders! It's just more, more songs that feel like they come from the reality where Kwarashi is still making music. Do I have to talk about Kwarashi every day now? Is that how... Is that, is that my life now? I don't want to. Oh, that's quite soon. I, I guess I, I don't think I realized that that was June. Um. You know, I didn't finish Outriders, and so the idea of more Outriders, I just kind of think about it and go like, yeah, I, Outriders, it's all right. They're, um, I think one of the things they're like, you're going to have a third mod slot. And I was like, that seems like it's meaningful, but I can't remember enough about what Outriders character stuff is like to get actually excited about that but but cool just slamming the haggle button I want a hoggle button you know what I mean put hoggle of labyrinth in more games
Tiny Build is one of the sponsors sure, of the show. Sure, sure. When Tiny Build lets you open your own medieval potion shop, you get hailed as a master alchemist. But when I do it, I get a sternly worded letter from my landlord about how my cauldron violates our lease agreement. Whatever, it's his loss. But more importantly, folks, we promise you the saying this, the, the difference between uh, and possible. and this does. I'm not saying this is better or I'm not saying this is worse. I'm just saying that like, if you put me in charge of writing that joke, I would have I would have written about cooking meth in a bathtub. Like that's I, that's maybe a character flaw on my part, <laughs> but that's what I would have done with that. Did they show this game last year? Uh, oh, this is okay. This is out out for season four. Jeez. This whole. Got a really neat look to it. Isometric. Ad ah, they showed cards. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Got a hard limit. <laughs> cards can be fun. I don't mean to be that big of a jerk about it, but also like, ah, jeez. Before your eyes lies the celestial islands, a world of peace above the clouds, protected by four great houses. More cards. More cards. This is like we've reached the the card section of the show. Now see. If you take these games and put them on the blockchain, you own the cards, and then you can bring your cards to any other card game. You like having this sword guy? Bring it to the Synthwave Kung Fu game. You know, it's, it's yours. You own it. You do it, right? You do it, right? And then just like somehow $80 million shows up here for me to like flee the country with. For my awesome blockchain pitch. Planet Earth, our beautiful home. To protect it, we must reach out to explore the unknown. Our team of experts is presently probing the deep sea in a struggle against the yoke of overregulation. These security and defense innovations allow you to shrink any problem down to size. We surge forward, obliterating the enemies of building a game around the Duke Nukem Shrink Ray, or go to our oh, okay. We are the future. We oh, King. Are oh, okay. And now right. it's time Killing to give you an exclusive briefing on what's next for one of PC gaming's titans of modding, simulation, and scale, Arma 4. Last month, developer Bohemia Interactive kicked things off by releasing Arma Reforger on Steam in early access. This playable prototype will be a foundation for Arma 4. And with it playable on Steam now, we have like a landmark. ton of questions about the future of Arma. I mean, after all, this is the series that helped birth the survival genre through DayZ. Oh, and also this other little niche genre you may have heard of called Battle Royale to help us peer into the future for this project. We've got none other than Bohemia Interactive. Thank you so much for joining us. So as of right now, Armor Reforger has been out for about a month. What is it that you've been learning or seeing from players? At first, we've learned that players uh, like Reforger a lot and they appreciate the work we've put into it. We also realized they like modding a lot and they really view this as a, a key quality of our games. And uh, we were very pleased by the reactions of both our community and the new players who immediately started flooding the internet with videos, playthroughs and uh, praise of our new technology. So we are very glad that the reception was so good. 
So there's no doubt players who have been longtime fans of the franchise stepping into Armor of Forger. And I'm curious, what were some of the big challenges of rebuilding that specific Arma feel from the ground up in this brand new engine? Well, it's a very tricky subject because even internally, it's an ongoing <laughs> kind of fight. So I, I myself okay, the... uh, very much on the very purist side of things. So no hard, no safe games, no superficial helpers. I wonder and if PC Gamer puts up the like full real versions of these so interviews that I'm are not a real Arma purist, and I'm on this for 25 years you know, now. The, so the questions kind of being reasked. Obviously, this is part of the fun. So I assume I assume this was not battle. shot I think this way. Two years ago, we really originally, right? To keep it, keep it Arma, and even internally preserve our own standards. So do it our own way rather than replicating what's maybe normal in other games because our goal is not to make the same game as all other games so our, our goal is to remain unique i'm curious if you can speak to what the main goals of reforger is because it's a little unusual compared to other releases i mean for instance how much content should a player expect if say they've been playing arma 3 for years our goals were of course to restart the series uh, from technological standpoint really make room for uh, some new achievements uh, utilize the technology which is state-of-the-art both in terms of how it looks like how it's controlled how it can be modded it's important to understand you know they're uh, talking it about it like it's kind of a tech demo we sort of thing but this thing is thirty dollars on steam behind it so just the tool suite is a massive tool suite never tested by large public so it's a premiere of a tool suite and these tools are being built for nearly five years now so we really need users to start using them to keep improving and continue building it sorry to interrupt but we have one quick question from the armor fans has russia's invasion of ukraine impacted your approach to armor 4 and armor of forger a game that depicts the cold war well yes because it's extremely close to us we even live uh, in uh, in a way very nearby so definitely uh, on the other hand, we started work on this many years ago, so the direction was set uh, before. But we always approach uh, conflicts and armed conflicts with a great uh, level of respect. We're still at the beginning, but we definitely would like to continue in our uh, exploring this serious team. Arma, as I see it, has always been a bit more of a anti-war game. It's an entertainment product, that's a uh, fair thing to admit. On the other hand, uh, given the topic, given um, our, let's say, maturity and long time we've spent on it and our ambition to portray it. Why do you think uh, they had that well, question come across like it was reason. cut in and like suddenly asked? To contribute by not just entertaining people, but also educating them on the subject. This was the whole point of starting the cooperation with the International Committee of the Red Cross. And I believe we have great potential big responsibility in this era and a very important chance to contribute at least a little bit to uh, the good side of things. This would not be an interview about Arma unless we were asking about modding. I mean, so many amazing games and genres. <laughs> anyway, from mods, Arma. am I so right? I gotta know uh, what's possible in Reforger that wasn't possible in the past. Now with this technology, it's possible Whoa. to <laughs> entirely different things, like entirely different games. It has so many variables, but the beauty now is that much more of it is user accessible, unlike the previous games. So people can easily digest how this is constructed in our workbench tools. So uh, I do all this life in Arma Reforger yet. The C++ engine. So now they can check the data Just, of I... every single element of the game and go much, much deeper than in previous games. So this will be super exciting. Now, I wanted to ask a little bit about performance, because anyone who's played Arma knows that it can get really challenging to get a good frame rate in can those know that multiplayer matches. Sometimes this game I'm really curious, runs like shit. What expectations should players have about performance leading into Arma 4? Arma 3 was built on foundations uh, laid down in times of single core and no GPUs, basically. So this time, much more uh, computations and ex intensive uh, re rendering things can be done directly on GPU, but it required completely a new approach. Again, we are in the beginning and we we know that there are problems, there are difficulties, but we are solving them one by one. We are really uh, gathering community feedback and 
even our own definitely feedback so we are moving things forward and uh, yeah it's about optimization it's not not that much about fps but also for like network traffic for instance then you I, have this the massive multiplayer game it's a it's a huge the challenge. question about Server performance. the, the it's way all that stuff happens like I've, it's completely like i'm i'm i can't hear what they're saying anymore because so i'm again, like i got so locked in on how awkward scoop on both armor reforger that thing was uh, now you don't go anywhere so weird here is what's around the corner so weird just around the corner in the pc gaming show prepare to experience and also the ranging from the their, to their their twitch chat went the latest from Shira super Games. racist as soon as that stuff came up development spared no expense on the new jurassic world evolution 2 expansion and get your crowbars ready for half-life alex levitation a special project from some very talented modders oh modders <sighs> what would pc gaming be without you while we're here, quick geography question. Which parts of the world use the most bandwidth for gaming? Answer this question for the folks at Compass Data Centers and it could win you a $500 Razer gift card. Scan the QR code on the screen Remember to the enter. Xbox card? Yeah, I have a, yeah, I, I have, year, I don't, the, debuted War Tales at the PC game I have whatever show, their card was. The publisher has a lot more than somewhere in the garage. RPG on the way. Up next, we'll hear what's up with Shiro's slate of projects and stick around for the debut of two completely new games, Decarnation and Abyssals. Hey everyone, thank you very much for the invitation, Mika. I'm James, and I can't wait to show you everything that we've got prepared for you today. So it's been a crazy couple of months for everyone here at Shiro Games, with Dune Spice Wars marking the most successful release in the history of the company. And it's entirely thanks to all of you. I have Dune installed, today, I just, it's Dune every Spice time I look at a screenshot of it, and I... And free for all. 2v2, I just all work together the... and co op against AI opponents. This does look awesome, though. I, I need to check this out. Between factions that will open a vast Some of it's kind of 4x stuff is, is uh, maybe a little deeper than I want. Uh, look, I just, I, I swear, man, I just, I love. After five years, I love Dune 2. I love Dune 2000. You know, like, like all that stuff. Like, that's uh, new chapter set that old ass RTS. So good. Decimated the lands of and for, you know, and, and so it's hard for me to get away Long from that as a comparison point broke. because, you know, obviously, the like, like pre Command and Conquer, Dune was. Dune 2 was an amazing video game. Our heroes arrive on unknown shores and find themselves confronted by unfamiliar faces in a dangerous new realm. This Northgard expansion arrives this winter. And for all of our War Tales players out there, Cooperative is finally coming to our open world tactical RPG. You share food, gold, mm -hmm. and camp with your friends. But you can split up to cover more grounds. Before every fight, devise the perfect strategy to overcome any threats that may stand in your way. But be careful in your approach, as one wrong move may lead to your group's demise. The co-op update will allow you to play between two to four players, and it will be available this summer. Right on. So a few months ago, we announced Shiro Unlimited, a new publishing label created by indies for indies. And we are very proud to announce two new titles coming from the Shiro Unlimited family. It seemed like our last chance to start again, to escape Earth's devastation. We used our limited hmm. resources to lay the foundations of a new life deep below the waves of this strange new planet. But soon, we realized it was not the dream world we had hoped for. That's got to be double hard. You're like, not only did we go to another planet, we, found ourselves we decided to live underwater. Lost. Oh, that's Isolated. bad. It's an interesting setting. It's a neat look.
this the look of this is pretty awesome. Thank you very much for sticking with us, everyone. We hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah, kind of cool. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. Huh. You just saw why you were exactly right to be afraid of the ocean in abyssals. And you confronted your inner demons in the retro dream horror of decarnation. No, I didn't. Next not, up, made it this far do without doing that. Not going to start now. World set after the collapse of civilization. Well, we're Let's about find to find out, out. How by taking a look at I Am Future from Tiny Bill. Well, sure, I guess we could look at video games for it too. But you know, hey, look out a window. No. Warning. Hibernation aborted. Your total hibernation time was six years, six months, five days. Welcome to Eden, your new home. Huh? I have no idea where the hell I am, but damn. This place is gorgeous. <laughs> okay, so he's only hibernating for six years. Like, what? What did it look like before? Because it couldn't have been. It's only six years, man. I was only supposed to be six years was way more, huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. And bestowed it upon us, a new generation, yeah. to share or spar over. Our great house is Something weird about having quotes from the publication running the event during the trailers for the... To improve and so weird. Them. Beginning with ourselves, of course. Prominence. Again, the, the, these are when you say, hey, we're having a, a PC as game well show. The stuff you like, oh, yeah, no, this is. It's awesome that PC Gamer has been fun. providing a place for. Um, you know, a, a wide variety of kind of indie PC games and, and, and different strategy games and stuff like that. Stuff that like doesn't, you know, it's not the bombastic like stage presentation and and all that stuff like, you know. They do move in herds. <laughs> that was so much. The thought process is simple. God creates. That's dinosaurs. where your line is. Destroys that's dinosaurs. where you're like. That was so much. That's where you're like. This is too much. Like an, an hour in is where you're like. God. That one of these trailers might come as a bit of a shock to the system. Here it is. This is the new system shot. <laughs> Video contains paid content. Oh, okay. So there's like DLC in here. I was like, what? Are you putting ads inside of your ads now? Right. That's like two days. PC Gamer. Humans interfacing with computers for, 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 for their own entertainment. The very notion disgusts me. Look upon my works, foul creatures. And weep at its magnificence. It is a beautiful day on Citadel Station. On Citadel Station. Humanity is on. is on the verge of a new era. I, Shodan, and its new god. 
A new Look era of beaten you, shit with pipes. A pathetic creature of meat and bone. How can you challenge a perfect, immortal machine? You are an insect. You are nothing. I create. I iterate. I fuse flesh and steel into perfection. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, so we got some door opening mini games. We got all kinds of shit. My children. Their blood is on your hands. You will suffer for your transgressions. Your transgressions. These are my avenging angels, and they will have retribution. That looks pretty good. This is that's a good ass trailer. That's a well edited, well done thing, man. Nate. What an incredible and frankly horrifying trailer. Developed by Night Dive Studio, System Shock is the return of a beloved acclaimed sci-fi saga. Today, to take us even further inside the world of System Shock, I am thrilled to welcome the one and only Warren Spector. Thanks so much for joining us, Warren. Hey, thanks for having me. This is gonna be uh, fun. In terms of trying to translate the experience of a game from 1994, three decades later to now, what doesn't carry over well? The first thing is the graphics, obviously. Um, we did the best we could, uh, but uh, <laughs> it was pretty primitive back then. And the, the other one is the... Uh, they blurred interface. out the if Mickey Mouse been, on his door opened, sign. Uh, the original, <laughs> a, a help screen that came up. That's, uh, that's, that's, we're not talking about Epic Mickey here today. Text. That's what that is, it, right? The, just, the, the blurred out, it's a Mickey I Mouse. I how the guys at Night Dive did it. It's, it's amazing. But... Frankly, as I think back on it, the game actually holds up pretty well. I'm excited to see it come back. Just wondering if you think many modern gamers are aware of the impact that System Shock has had in terms of gameplay systems, in terms of narrative structure, on so many games that came after it. I'm not sure yeah, people that's see totally the influence, a... which is uh, a little, a little unfortunate. But I think the rest of the world absolutely is, is going 100 to get a Mickey now Mouse to experience it, and I, I think they'll see not just that they're having fun playing this game, but also see that uh, other games followed in its footsteps. Nowadays, we walk around with computers in our pockets. We're worried about the evil of algorithms. How do you think about a character like Shodan in 2022? Shodan seems. Uh, far too close to reality to me right now. And let's just hope that she doesn't show up as nasty a form as she did back in 1994. <laughs> well, Warren, I wanted to thank you so much for joining us. And I want to let you know, I cannot wait to return back to that world I played and enjoyed so much as a kid. Cheers. Hey, I can't wait to return to that world. I, I forgot <laughs> right? basically right? fans know way more about the game than I do now. So it'll be a new experience for me too. <laughs> Thank you so much again, Warren Spector, for joining us to talk all things System Shock. I personally can't wait for the game to come out, though. It might completely ruin my sleep schedule, but before I spiral further, here are some more games to cram into your eyeballs. Ah, oh, good, my eyeballs the need more games. Change the harshest aspects of our world. Every generation has yeah, is, is Shodan gonna be a, a, a sexy robot lady? I don't know. By the time they, I hope not. Nothing from the solar system but a lasting amity of reason and justice. To see a war under any pretext would bring ruin to the great wellness of mankind. Any victory achieved through that deepest expression of human unreason would be as devastating as defeat. We have but a singular purpose to establish peace and security for all mankind. Yeah, but what if instead you blew up spaceships? Our solar system. Lead the survivors to Demerat, where you will continue following Frontier storyline campaign in orbit of an alien star. Oh, sick! Agents of Mayhem 2!
This was, where was this? This was at the Achilles thing, right? All right, gamers, good work. You've made it here to a site of grace, or a bonfire, or a sculptor's idol, or a lamp. Make sure you're staying hydrated, replenish your potions, and most importantly, Keep letting us know what games you're excited about. I think I just, I, you know, PC it's a choice, show. right? And I think I mean, the the whole I like can't wait to play the, the multi-camera oh, shot yeah, of host, up, where sometimes good. you get the host it's not looking at the camera, like this shot. I, I just, Cyberpunk it's like courtesy of Novalis, and experience the investigative To me, this shot exposes the artifice the of the whole the thing, of Sam Barlow. which you know, whatever it is, what it is. But like, there's something about like, okay, like keep eyes on camera. We are talking to you in the audience and I just yeah the, there's something about that second camera shot when they use it in those sorts of situations that I always a short clip here do you want to tell us what we're about to see well I don't want to spoil things too much does this work as a confession <gasps> this stuff's neat. Uh. Now it's worth more. Did you ever I read up on this, it's like, what is it? There's like, it's unreleased movies and, you know, there's a mystery. Yeah, three lost movies. Ah. Yeah, you want that Sega CD style compression, yeah. That would be a good fun add-on filter. <laughs> hey boss, time to wake up. We got customers waiting. What do you mean you don't know where to start? Let's clean this place up. Move some chairs and tables around. We can make this place shine again. If the weather gets bad, we can grow some veg in the greenhouse. Once we start making real money, well, then you can rent that fancy new apartment in mid -time. Cyberspace management sim. So make friends, make enemies. Give customers a route, just turn on the old charm. <laughs> or water down their drinks. I'm not your conscience. <laughs> this is a world to explore, to make stories your stories you ever look up at the clouds and wonder what's up there well if you dream big enough maybe you'll find out maybe we all will welcome to nivalis neat i mean assuming that's like well i don't know like it seems Hi, like they I'm showed a lot of and okay I'm here we go Roman. at Islands, we are big fans of cyberpunk fiction and games but we have our own ideas and fishing mini games. World can be. This is a game in which you manage your restaurant, bar, or nightclub, take care of your staff, make deals, farm, and experience the stories of the people you meet. Or maybe you just want to take the day off and go fishing at the docks instead. Nivalis primarily uses voxel art for the environments. We spend lots of time creating a unique atmosphere with high levels of detail and It's a really elements. cool look. I, I'm a sucker for the voxel stuff, what can I say? And we can't wait to see the choices you'll make and how you'll choose to live your life when you come visit us in Nivalis. You can wishlist Nivalis now on Steam and the Epic Game Store. 
Mana is the gaming rewards debit card that puts the power back in the hands of players. So with every quest you complete and every purchase you make, you're earning for the rewards quests. you actually want. Quests on a credit make card. It easy for you to set up and start. Just sync your favorite games to your Mana account and quests start on a credit card. rewards the next time you play. So why pay any other way? Pay with Mana. Pay with power. Mana. Game the system. Enjoy Get game. ready to overclock Who's gaming the system? Eyeball. Not because the people that are getting their credit card. My computer with three Chrome tabs open. Oh, hey. I did not, okay, yeah. So, I did not know that this was the next Necrosoft game. That, okay. I like the look of this a lot. This is like, it's like Persona 1, 2, like, like early. This is fucking neat. <laughs> they showed a, a little tiny bit of this at the start, uh, but damn. You just saw Demon School from Welsh developer Isbrid Games. And now, it's time to take a bit of a spooky transition. If you're at home, turn on all the lights in the room, make sure the salt circle is unbroken, and check to see that your door is properly painted with sacrificial lamb's blood, because things are about to get certifiably terrifying. Let's look at the H.R. Giger-inspired biopunk horror, Scorn. No! Desolate and decay. You're creepy tentacle dick nightmare. game. I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this. <laughs> Greetings. <laughs> I'm your host, Doug Bradley, and I invite you to join me as we explore Scorn's mesmerizing labyrinth of odd forms. Okay, I was trying to decide, like, is this an in-game character talking to me, or is this just a creepy voice they got to talk about the game? Like, in the middle of a desolate hellscape. Filled with biomechanical contraptions, part flesh, part machine. An industrial civilization now lying in decay and ruin. Oh, Doug Bradley was pinhead. Okay. All right. Hidden sure. Fauna sleeps within the yep. underbelly of that the seems world, like a person you would get to talk about this more than to be left thing. Undisturbed. Scorn has been carefully crafted with great attention to detail. Everything is focused on building a specific atmosphere. Yep, sure is. From a unique organic it ecosystem sure is. to an unsettling soundscape created by Ethek and Lustmord. Scorn has no dialogue, so <laughs> most of the storytelling comes from the environment. Discovering the ever-present symbiotic relationships and how things are connected equips you with the tools to progress. While there is shooting within the game, Scorn is not a shooter. Every encounter must be carefully considered. A wrong choice could be deadly. Ah. 
I hope you've enjoyed this glimpse into the twisted world of Scorn. The team at Ebb Software can't wait for you to uncover the secrets of this unique world as you experience Scorn firsthand this October. I don't, I don't. Are you prepared to unravel your inner self within Scorn's world of horror? Ew. This is goop, this is goopy. Now, while I've been delightedly playing Dune Spice Wars, harvesting melange and trying Headphones to figure out how to pronounce quest, qu quisats, it doesn't matter. I'm equally ready to turn hordes of Tyranids into a Jackson Pollock painting in Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2. In this brutal third-person shooter, you once again step into the oversized power armor of Titus, an elite Primaris Space Marine in a galaxy immersed Let me tell you a story about my old man. To take us further inside the grim dark. I am joined I'm Titus. By I'm a Willis Space Marine. Oliver Hollis, the creative director on Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2. First of all, thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thank you. Thanks for having us. Good to be here. Now, Tim, I want to start with you. You previously worked at id Software on Doom. How would you say the Space Marine compares to Doom Guy? Mm, that is a good question. Uh, I bet many people do not know that the original Doom Guy was actually a Space Marine, inspired by an even older Space yeah, Marine. Yeah, I bet no one knew that. The Warhammer 40,000 Space Yeah, I bet, I bet so, no one knew that, too. You know, it's really exciting for, for me to work on and Space Marine 2, you know, because it's a great franchise and I know that it's inspired so many other video games throughout the last 25, 30 years. Oh, oh, absolutely. And there's so much lore to sift through. And I think this brings us to talk a little bit about the new Space Marine that you're going to get to play, a Primaris Space Marine. Oliver, talk to us a little bit about Captain Titus and what makes this class of Space Marine different from the others in the universe. So the Space Marine is, is a, a brainchild of the Emperor, uh, the kind of leader of this uh, of humanity in the, in the grim dark future. He saw the dangers that the universe presented and he created a, a super soldier from his own DNA. And each of these different factions, these different chapters have different genetic traits of the Emperor. But what makes the Primaris different is that uh, a guy named Belisarius Kor, uh, the Emperor's kind of chief of course, scientist, yeah, Belisarius Kor. went back, did some digging in We're the all... old uh, data and found a way to Belisarius enhance the, the qualities that a space marine has by installing new devices, new kind of bio implants in their body. So now these guys are two and a half meter tall monsters capable of destroying anything in their path. It's reminding two and me a half meters. thousand times I have rewatched the Astartes animation. That's it's, amazing. it's so exciting. Mm. It's so exciting that we now get to be in that position to play that kind of character. And in the trailer, <laughs> we saw a lot of Tyranids. Are they the main enemy Just that you're going to be So what makes them such a compelling foe? In this particular game, the Tyranids are the main focus. And what makes them compelling is that they Seven are or eight feet. extra galactic right. uh, locust-like creatures. They, they've come in from goodness knows where. They spread like wildfire. They devour everything in their path and they leave nothing in their wake. So one of the great things about the Tyranids is they come in the thousands. And our uh, proprietary engine, the Saber Swarm engine, can can deliver ah, yes, the saber swarm engine battles now we will have thousands of tyranids uh, and you will rip and tear through them all i mean that is so thrilling because rip and tear you say older games Tim Willits. even hope to do and you're talking a little bit about combat i know that some of the previous entries were more melee focused what's the combat like in space marine 2 so the combat in space marine 2 is a mix of in your face melee combat along with some really cool over the top weapons so um you know we 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 looked at you know the original space marine game where they where uh, it had a lot of this push forward combat which has inspired many other video games but uh, but that never stop never take cover combat is integral to space marine 2 along with you know these these really cool powerful weapons so you, you're either tearing up the enemies in front of you or you're blowing them away from uh, the back of the battlefield it's uh it's it's the best of both worlds i mean that sounds so terrific and i mean i know you guys are huge fans of the 40k lore so i'm curious about in no i never heard of it what is it what fun seeing come no, I'm talking together about and oh we're talking space marine on. okay shit. right at the beginning of the project uh, tim and i went to the warhammer museum which was an incredible experience and you go around all these cabinets where these incredible miniatures that have been painted by these masters but are they are using next generation paint 
you find yourself are they using the new warhammer paint into the ranks of, of space marines that are facing tyranids or orcs or whatever and something that tim and i said at, at that moment was we need to make this come alive mm -hmm. i don't want to look at this i want to be inside this i want to be gunning down tyranids by the thousands and so seeing that actually happen and come alive has been thrilling Am I going to feel like the This is all the trailer that they this is all so, old trailer footage even. This isn't even new. Even more so when, when you're wielding one of those massive Stuff, weapons right? and you're faced with a thousand tyrannids who all want to eat you alive and you're just letting rip and you can see shell casings bursting out of these massive weapons one after another. The sound, the gameplay, the way it feels is all designed to make you feel like the most powerful warrior in the universe. Well perfect. That answers everything. Thank you so much, Tim and Oliver from Saber Interactive for joining us. I can't wait. Warhammer 40K Space Marine 2 comes to PC, PS5, Was there any Xbox new X and footage S. in that? Because, that, now, again, next, that seemed like it was, they chopped up the old trailer. Proverbial power armor. First, Replicant D6's homage to the golden days, or should I say, golden eyes of 90s console shooters. And an atmospheric sci-fi adventure on the red planet from Frontier Developments and Kyoken Interactive. That'd be Take weird if they were like, what? What are you doing? Oh, oh. Weird. In a world where they are going to seemingly put Goldeneye back out again, literally any day now, this is a really odd project. Like the same weapon pickup style text and that, that... I just, it's neat, this is, Oh, this, this, like, fake Bond music, too, is... Oh, huh. Okay. That's cool. What a weird thing. What a weirdly specific thing. Oh, that's even weirder. <laughs> that's really weird. That I that something about the name on this makes me want to keel over. That I don't I don't I don't know I don't I don't I don't like this anymore. <laughs> they crossed the line. They went too far. Uh, they went too far. Sarah? And in the name Hi. and and logo. And now I'm Kathy. now I'm not, not all not all for it. I don't know. Please I can't quite me. explain why. The in-game stuff looked cool. They should come up with a better protected. name. For that, the arcs and their revolutionary technology. I, something about that really, it's like, I don't know. You we went, you went too far in your bootleg golden eye quest. Step. I need to know that when we get there, you'll make the right decisions. We can do this. What do you expect to find? on Mars. The best ham sandwich I've ever eaten. Hi, my name's Elise Chappell, and I play Kathy Johansson in the out of this world sci-fi epic, Deliver Us Mars. Join Kathy and the crew of the Zephyr on an unmissable adventure as they journey to the Red Planet to recover technology vital to the survival of Earth and humankind. Deliver Us Mars is set to land on September 27th and is available to pre-order now on PlayStation, Xbox, Steam and the Epic Games Store. Stay a while and listen. <laughs> to this list of games still to come, the team behind Half-Life Alex Levitation will put their mod where their mouth is and then it's paradox time. Not as in <laughs> us creating an actual time it's paradox. Paradox time is, is a way to put the it. Latest from Victoria That's... 3. Plus, you can literally and then, hey, it's a PC gaming show. You know it's coming. With the it's going to be paradox game. time. All this and more in just a moment. But first a final pop quiz for all you Valorant, CSGO, and League of Legends players. How much has eSports revenue increased since 2000? So they said this was going to be just under two hours, which means we've got probably about another rest, half an hour or so of this left. The for a chance to win a $500 Razer gift card. Visit gaming.compassdatacenters.com to enter. 
This show oh, seems right, very all over now. the place, but like, like that's PC show. games, right? Like, that's the exciting thing about the I'm PC is that Stormgate, the there are a trillion games coming out on it, and it's all over the place. Giant. Then our resident RTS addict hope, is going okay, to sit if they're down show with the game developers to ask the hard Stormgate, questions I hope like, that when can we play this already? I hope that they show something more than that cinematic trailer. And like, didn't Keely, like Keely had like concept art and just the trailer, right? This is, this is just the trailer again, isn't it? Okay. Okay. Dev update. Years ago, Over the past couple of days, we've really got a lot of work to in. build a brand new real-time strategy game. Together, we've been fortunate to work on some of the greatest RTS games of all time. And now we have a chance to do it again by creating the next evolution of that legacy. Today, we are so excited to share a first glimpse of Stormgate, an exclusive sneak peek into the universe and game that we've been creating for you. Stormgate takes place in an all new post-apocalyptic setting. RTS Returns is a really like our story begins weird concept for them to go with because it's like kind of of humanity. I mean, there are this other RTS games out there by the infernal host, a playable alien race of demonic invaders that are hell bent on claiming this planet as their own. With our story, we are creating an ever expanding game universe told through an ongoing series of campaign missions that you can play solo or cooperatively. New chapters will come out regularly, along with new units, maps, modes, and plenty of other surprises. Mm. In addition to campaign missions, we're building a world-class competitive experience with grassroots and professional tournaments accessible from directly within the game. There will be different leagues suitable for all levels of experience. In our new three-player co-op versus AI mode, you'll level up your heroes, collect rewards, and customize your forces to open up new styles of gameplay and long-term variety. Stormgate right. will be free to play, but not pay to win, and there will be no NFTs. Beta testing starts next year, and you can sign up now to reserve your place in line at playstormgate.com. I don't know that I would have led with... Uh... Talk about esports. You might happen to know that I'm a huge fan of real-time strategy games. Before StarCraft is my favorite game. I played it for 25 years. I still play showing it. more of the game. And that's why I am so thrilled today to be talking to Frost Giant Studios. They're a group of amazing developers who have worked on literally my favorite games of all time. And we're here to talk about their brand new, free-to-play, real-time strategy game set in a post-apocalyptic Earth. It's Stormgate. And here to talk about it is the CEO and production director Whoa. at Frost Giant, Whoa. Tim Morton. Thanks for joining us, Tim. There's a person Thank in there. Thank you so much for having me here. I want to know about the world. I want to know about the game. There's a person in there with Tell him. Tell us, what is Stormgate? All right, this is our first game as a new studio. Um, and it is classic real-time strategy, but designed to be more social. We build the game in a universe that ties everything together, but provide different right. kinds of experiences for players. Just to a Steam Deck just hanging out there. Play. So we've got uh, cooperative campaign mode, also play open-ended co-op. But if you're somebody who really enjoys competition, we've got one versus one high skill competitive. And those are very different ways to play in some ways, but they're also all unified by the universe, by the races, by the units. So you really yeah, yeah, yeah. get a sense for how to enjoy the game. And I'm curious a little bit about that core gameplay, because obviously in all these modes, you're going to be collecting money, building bases, building units, and so on. And I know that for you, the game feeling really good and really smooth to play is super important. Now, obviously, I. I come from a time where if the pathfinding is bad, we call that high skill opportunity. But I mean, how do you think about getting the controls, the motions, just the feel of the game to feel good in 2022? Yeah, it's interesting that RTS is one of the only genres I can think of where you have to have hundreds, even thousands of units synchronized over the network and responsive in a way that high skill like pro esports players feel good about playing mm -hmm. the game. That's not easy. It does require custom technology. Um, there's no engine that you buy off the shelf that does that for you. So we definitely started knowing that um, and having the benefit of our, our chief architect, James Anhalt, who did that work yeah. previously on StarCraft II. Um, so we've put a lot of effort. Have you heard of StarCraft II? Sure. And this is going to be one of the first major RTSs people are aware of that is on Unreal Engine 5. What is it like working in this next generation engine? 
It's pretty incredible how far things have come from a graphics perspective, and I think the art team is unlocked in so many ways by what Unreal provides. So we're very excited, and we're still learning everything that Unreal can do for us, but even that first cinematic that we debuted, like that's done in Unreal. So the high quality graphics that you're seeing mm. are actually coming from Unreal as an engine. So we've talked a little bit about for new players, making the game feel a little more approachable, a little bit more streamlined. I feel like this Obviously, is not Starcraft. High Real detail. Real-time strategy has this astonishingly long history as a competitive game, as an eSport. And I'm curious, how is your team going to approach that? So a lot of the emphasis around our thinking has been focused on what are things that we can add, especially around the gameplay experience. And mm -hmm. one of those things is more seamless integration with esports. I mean, being able to sign up, participate in tournaments directly from yeah. the client in a way sure. that gives that players makes total even if sense. Not, like, Absolutely, top grandmaster should do it. Know, yeah. Ready to take on Serral, there's still an opportunity to be the best on your block, or the best at your company, or the best at your school. So we want to facilitate esports all the way from grassroots level up to the pro level directly in the client. So, of course, in the history of RTS games, a really important component of them has always been mods. I mean, Warcraft 3... This makes sense as an interview that these two game, specific people would conduct, but, like, as, as, as like, potentially someone's first... Community? A number of members um, of the exposure actually, to the game. The it's team. like not the team as a whole is very passionate about it. From the outset, we started out applying resources. Like here's all the stuff editor. we're gonna do, um, esports and mods and all. You know, like sure, of, of course. To the editing experience but like, for RTS. I feel like they have not done. done a, they have not even attempted to sell to me on the actual game they're making yet. Really core to us as a team to enable. It's like oh, it's it's got some. Of course, it's got this race and this race and yeah, hey they're gonna come out of the gates and like it's it's been so, so we are gonna start our beta in 2023 we already have a site stood up at playstormgate.com to be able to register for the beta mm -hmm. we have a lot of active discussion topics on our subreddit as well so there's an opportunity to participate in the dialogue around what we're building Tim, thank you so much for joining us again today. We just got a chance to talk about Stormgate, the upcoming kind of not really RTS like yes, like Frost talk Rides around Studios. Stormgate. I'm super pumped to play it, and be sure to check it out at PlayStormgate.com. Now, is Tim, it? I'm going to do with transition to the next game. Are you ready? It's going to be good. Watch this; it's going to be so is sick. It, is that true? Next, that, we're going to show you Lesara Summit. That true that Day 9's okay mother games. works at now, the developer for this game. Medically inadvisable amount of time playing strategy that true? games. Is this, of that's, that is what's being this said in Twitch chat, and I feel like violent. that's maybe a disclosure that you. attempt to create society in the mountains. Two words: Tim yodeling accident. Let's check it out. I mean, out. you know, he's a longtime StarCraft player. These are all ex Blizzard guys. Like, it, it would make sense that he would know these people. Like that. That makes a ton of sense. Um... So even if that specific, even if that specific bit of info is not true, yeah. Any, anyway, I don't know. Like it, it's again, that makes total sense as like a hey, uh, you know, here's our kind of like all the way down the rabbit hole. Let's talk about the specific weird side stuff. But and, but even then, it wasn't really a ton of detail. It was just like yeah, we'll support mods. Like yeah, we want to do esports in the client. And like yeah, cool. But like I again, there's just a. I, I feel like there's an onboarding. There's a there's a how do you how do you tell people what this game is? I mean, I guess maybe they did. Maybe they did. Maybe it's just like, hey, it's a real time strategy game. But I, I feel like I would want to hear more about like what are you what are you doing to make you know you talk about like you know RTS returns. What does that actually mean to you? Um, it kind of didn't really go away, um, but. Uh, you know what? What do you? What's the game you're making? What type of units? What can we like? How have you changed uh, base management and resource stuff to make it easier for players who didn't play a lot of those other RTSs? Or, or are you just going after them? You know, like there's just I don't know. That's a I feel like there's just a... They skipped over a lot of the what is that game and went right to you all know what StarCraft 2 is innately and so let's let's move past the video game and talk about uh, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, I don't... That was Frozen Flame, an open world survival RPG. Maybe in the context of this being active, two hours in on a PC on a gaming show, maybe that's okay. But I, I don't know. This is something. A cursed land full of environmental hazards. Feels like a missed opportunity to really try to actually sell like a new generation of players on. Instead, well, whatever. The, the game's not even going into beta until next year, so they'll have like nine different att- to like reasons to over everything and break the curse. Or nine different spots or where they could talk more the about the game, monster. right? So yeah. still kind of cozy. The demo for Frozen Flame was released just before the show, so you can jump in or grab some co-op buddies and see how long you can survive for right now. And keep an eye out for the early access launch later this year. I was like, is this this chroma back? The shooter? Uh, like, oh wait, no, this is there. Enjoy your gaming. If you could listen to the noise of history, then you would hear by the sounds of the Victorian age that the world changed forever. The roar of the engines, the bangs from new factories, and the cries in the streets calling out for revolution. In Victoria 3, we simulate this era, 100 years starting in 1836, and put you in charge of a young society. Okay. You will meet the people back then, high and low, over cultures across the globe. They are the beating heart of your nation and form powerful groups with needs and desires. Crush them. Crush Listen them into to dust. Their calls and let it influence reform, or turn a deaf ear to protect what is proven and stable. Your politics will decide where you want to go, but your economy, how far you'll come. Taxes, production, trade, and construction. Oops. Play these cards right, and you can harness the Industrial Revolution to turn your cities into titans. This is the engine you will need on the global stage. Use pacts, threats, and bluffs to secure your place in the sun. Anything done by war can be achieved with diplomacy, but you can decide when push comes to show. Here you write the stories, and over time, the history of your world will be carved into the map. Blimps. What will your society be like? What is the sound they got blimps. echo over continents? And be heard we ain't got blimps now. That's why I'll go back and reshape society for more blimps. Hot zeppelins, you know what I mean? Tomorrow. the gameplay debut of Victoria 3 from Paradox Interactive, a grand strategy game coming later this year. And let us take this moment to let you know you can wish us Victoria 3 by visiting the PC Gaming Show event page on Steam, where you'll be able to find every game featured in today's show. Type pcgamer.com slash wishlist into your browser to be taken straight there. And now on with the show. And now on with the show. Kill is neat. That's kind of cool. It's real simple. Okay, all right. HD. All right. Yeah, I got. Yeah.
What's say, up, PC it's... gamers? We're back again. Now, what you just saw was everything New Blood's got going on for 2022. A Medieval the Black Labyrinth, Ultra Kill Act 2, Faith, Fallen Aces, and a brand new update for Dusk that's bringing all new HD models and weapons that nobody asked for. So we're doing it anyway. Now, last year you might have noticed we teased a bunch of games here uh, that we weren't ready to talk about just yet. And we're still not ready to talk about those games. But I want to let you know that, yes, we're still working on a top-down shooter. Yes, we're still working on a Fallout-style RPG, my dream game. And, yes, we're still working on a car combat game. But we're not ready to talk about those games just yet. What I want to talk about is Gloomwood. Now, two years ago, y'all straight up forgot to show the Gloomwood trailer. It's Last good to... year, you bumped me so Gabe Newell could talk about a bunch of demos or some shit. See them branching year, out PC from... Gamer, you promised. You promised we would get to show Gloomwood. Making so a I bunch of new old bullshit. shooters. You're on a Steam Deck ad right now or some shit. I'm gonna... Steam Deck. Powerful, portable PC gaming. PC Gamer! You see this puppy? I will drown this puppy! I will... If you don't let you us can't show Gloomwood, I am going you... to drown this adorable... I would never... I would never... Okay. I would never do that. Hi. I love you. So yeah, we good? Uh, no. Can we show Gloomwood? Are you sure? Well, all right. It's about time. Hello, Doctor. I had hoped for us to meet at my estate. No matter. I can guarantee your safe arrival. A promise few others here can make. The townsfolk are mm. not fond of outsiders. Don't delay. It'd be great if this whole trailer was just like you finding guns, just like the gun. Like here are here's every gun pickup animation in in the game. Like in case you had an, in case you were wondering what we're going for here, we've registered the, the URL thiefwithguns.com. Like, oh, okay, right, the thief. And that's okay. probably the URLs they made for them. It yeah. wouldn't be a PC gaming show without the silliest, most ridiculous website names in human history. Which is why I'm delighted to share that next we have a group of such games that run the gamut from medieval mayhem to an adorable animal fight club. And our first rule: we absolutely plan to talk about it. Enjoy your gaming. Corrupted what? Why is it always doing this just when I need to showcase the game? Okay, I'm gonna take that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Yes, I have. The update to System 10.1.1 will provide a game. clean sorting of all cool. your files and ensure that situations like this won't ever happen. Oh no 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 no! Nobody's updating me. That's the thing. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Thank you, but we'll pass. Okay, so I do have a backup of the trailer. While I go rummage into the bin for it, please welcome my personal assistant. That will do a great job at pitching the game for you. Uh, talk about how cool I am in the story and how funny and witty. <laughs> you know, just talk about me.
found it. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, the trailer. Okay, who had the amazing idea to save the trailer back up in 14.4 pixels? Do we have any ants working for us? What? Story of a game, and it's the game set inside a phone whose OS does not want to update. That has potential, but that's not a trailer. That's a sentence. Family depends on their ability to rule the city, to fight with valor, and to learn. Oh, if only it were that easy. Good God, man! Hang on now. What? Sure. Yep. Stick them. Ah, this looks, this looks cool. I don't know. Yeah. Story generating strategy. That's. I don't know what you're up to, fuzzball, but back off. I've, I have not played, I don't think I've played this. Uh, Maximum spider over here, but with an all right. Fire! Maybe I'll finally check that out. I'm meaning to. This looks nice. So is this like a big co-op thing then, or...? Three, four, five, is that six? Core keeper, okay. Core keeper. It's basically Terraria, okay. This is the latest DLC right. for Core Keeper, well, I mean, the sandbox survival sim from Fireshine Games and Pugstorm. The sunken sea biome update is available on June fifteenth. Kind of remember I've seen Core Keeper. Keeper. I, I guess I, I, now we have even the more name is familiar for sure. And trailers, showing a lot so more than what's currently in it. Continue. Okay. All right. Did you press it? I'm gonna go ahead and soupy prepped it. No, but seriously, press it. Man, if you got a crate oh, in your logo, then. The start to create review time for all your games is really going to be off the charts. When our crops failed, the ruling class would still collect the same share, leaving our children to starve. And if we had any coin to our name, the taxman would appear, demanding it for the crown. The nobles hid behind the city. Watching these. Walls. I did nothing when Ray Where dudes eat chicken. I'm like, oh, I'm, hmm. I have not eaten other than that. So, well, I had that granola so bar before we started, but. It was time to leave. That we'd rather take our chances in the wilderness, seeking the promise of a new land, than starve to death in our homeland. The journey wasn't easy. We lost many along the way. But this wild, mm -hmm. unsettled land. Is this Sean Bean? Sounds like it could be. 
this is a Sean Bean alike. I'm drinking in my closet water. Yeah, I'm gonna go suck the carpet for a while for some uh, fluid. That sounds. Enjoy your gaming. What is below is destined to be understood. Our life depends on the whims of the weather. Our life is tied to this earth. The water we harvest, the plants we grow, the air we filter. Any waste would be fatal to our survival. We must learn to live in harmony with this world. For too long we have wandered without purpose. From now on our city will be a source of hope. Mm. Huh. That looks cool. To understand our world, we must explore it. We must find the tablets. The seeds of knowledge that bind all the elements together. To build our survival. To, to build, build our, our city. city. I don't know that I like these scenes as much as I like the the kind of the isometric looking kind of gameplay stuff like that synergy. All right. Welcome to Icarus, Prospector. Well, thank you. The planet wow. we almost lost, then found a reason to stay. Oh yeah, there's the reason. These things will suck the chrome off a trailer hitch. We're Once staying we here, partner. <laughs> we've made progress. It's me, I'm the alligator. The the land. How to use Icarus to our advantage. Our friends at the UDA are offering up a slice, a whole new terrain. If you learn, build, and survive, maybe, just maybe. There's a future here. Think you got what it takes? No, that's no good. Well, that one's a little, uh, too big for our purposes. In the rich tapestry of the PC gaming community, modders are one of the most inspiring subcultures. In fact, some of the most popular genres today started as PC gaming mods. Right now, modders Sean FMP1 Snelling and Corey Lado are making something incredibly special in the form of an ambitious mod for Half-Life Alex. It's called Levitation. It's an original four to five hour campaign that builds on Valve's original VR game, Half-Life Alex. With Alex searching for a pair of rebels gone rogue, they've discovered a strange floating building in Sector X and decided to investigate it, against orders, obviously, and now it's your turn. Let's go back to the world of Gordon, G-Man, and Alex with this exclusive gameplay footage. Alex, according to this old resistance map, there's a control room somewhere outside the building you're in. Sorry if that's vague, the map was drawn using somebody's blood. Yeah, you wonder, like, a new VO, or I know, like, the, there are some mods that have started to use, um, you know, AI voices, training voices on the original voice lines and trying to make them sound, and then, and then some of the voice actors that did those lines originally are like, don't do that, that's, you're, you're stealing my 
voice here for that. Detecting an incredibly large energy I mean, signature. But, you know, people, it doesn't like people really probably liked Half Life Alex, so the idea of someone making more Half Life uh, Alex probably Gordon Freeman. is uh, certainly going to hold some appeal, right? I mean, hey. Okay, so the plan is to get to that control room and get Gordon. Shoot him. Just shoot him. I got my I got my quest two out and started setting it up and then it totally once I started installing all the stuff to play PC games on it, it so destroyed my audio setup for everything else that I was like, ugh, I'm just gonna uninstall everything and I don't have time to deal with this right now, but you know I do kinda wanna at least poke back into VR stuff and uh, and see what's up. Yeah, like all the redirects and and all that other stuff, um, or the the way it redirects audio out the out to the headset and stuff, and the way OBS captures this and that it was just like a device nightmare that like was not being solved by me just toggling it back. And so I was like, okay, I, I can't. Uh. Cannot do it currently. Um, Oh, yeah, no, I, I tried Virtual Desktop as well. It was the same situation. I mean, Virtual Desktop comes with its own additional, like, fake audio device on top of all that other stuff, so... Um, yeah. Does VR still need a ton of space? I mean, depends on the game. Like, it's it's, it's game by game. Um, ah, good. Thanks. Toilet stuff. Um... I mean, the games that I find the most interesting are usually the ones that, that do, you know... Um, end up requiring some space.
They're closing the show with this, aren't they? Because, you know, we're, we're pretty much at the, the two-hour-ish mark. Um, and I, again, you know, I, you know, I, whatever. I don't, I don't want to be a jerk about it. I, you know, again, people love Half-Life Alex, and a mod for Half-Life Alex is, is especially a high-quality one would be incredibly welcome, I'm sure. Um, but, uh... You know, this is, uh... Why did I not love Half-Life Alex? Because I don't have the space to play it. Um... Because when I was playing it, I was practically punching my monitor and doing all this stuff. Because you know, I just didn't have the the space to do it. And left. Um, it also did not run well. I mean, you know, I've I've upgraded quite a bit since then. Um, but uh, they also optimized a, a bit after launch too, and, and fixed a lot of that. But like at launch, I, I definitely there was some performance stuff um, for me. Yeah, that was cool. Gonna come to the workshop, so I'm sure. Like, well, folks, this if you think about it, Valve should be today. partially funding about that or something because it's in their best interests to about genetically sell a Valve index to do all to to get so to get VR. The there has truly never been a better time to be part of the PC gaming community. Over the course of the last two hours, we saw games from developers all over the world, and we wanted to thank everyone who tuned in to watch the Valve show. should be doing all a lot of shit there. Yeah, you're right. You're work right. with us, and of uh, course, and I guess they, they've moved on to the, the PC gaming show uh, they've moved on to the the Steam Deck now, right? And they're like, oh VR, right? Yeah, we oh yeah, we used to do that. Yeah, you want to do a mod for it? Sure, you know awesome. I tell me do immediately. It. Anywhere you can find one, let me know. And of course. A warm thanks to you again for joining us at this year's PC Gaming Show. It's something I look forward to every year, and we're thrilled that you joined us again. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. That's a lot. There was a lot. This is the official PC Gaming Show 2022 pre-show. It's the live show before the, li uh, the pre-recorded show. F Go to the start. Make sure you're staying hydrated. Replenish your potions and motion. Let's do it again. This is the first time. But before I spiral further into my concerns, I'm here mm. more. All right, one more time. You just saw demons. I am also going to say one of the big things around this week is uh, live broadcasts and live shows and things happening live, live, right? And um. I think ending you know, ending your show with all the bloopers from your pre-recorded. I mean, obviously it's pre-recorded, right? No one, they're not fooling anybody. Uh, it's not like I was like, wait a minute just now. But um, I think kind of reminding people that, that this is all super, super, super pre-recorded. Um, just turn on stationary. But yeah, no, I know you can, you can theoretically play VR anywhere, of course, because you can do stationary mode and do all that shit. But it's not like you see all the shortcomings that much more in those situations. Like, you know, why do, why do VR when you like, like at some point those compromises are too much to where it's just like, like for me playing Half-Life Alex in, in a stationary seated position, uh, which is pretty much what I had to do. It was a pain in the ass to play it. It was not a fun game to play at that point. Um, and so, you know, the, the best part about VR is being able to move and do things and, and actually, actually duck and, you know, especially in shooters and all that sort of stuff, like being able to take cover and all that. But like in a situation where I'm like, I have a crouch button and I have this and I have that because I don't have the room to do this. Like all you, all you feel is just like, God, this, this is not the way that this was meant to be played. Um, and at some point. It just becomes like, well, why am I, why am I even doing this? Um, I'll do this later some other time when maybe I will have the space to do it right um, and and play it properly, you know? Like, I think compromised VR is, 
And this ended up being my problem with PlayStation VR in general was being tethered and the, the camera and the way the tracking works and stuff like that. It was just, it was too many compromises at a certain point. That's why cockpit VR is so cool because you're, you know, they, they make a game that works, um, in more situations. Right. But I, you know, I don't know, like there's a lot of different VR games. There's a ton of stuff out there and, and not as much as you'd think this many, like, I feel like every time I load up the Oculus app on my phone, and um just go to like the new releases in the store and scroll down like what's come out on quest lately it's like not that many games before i get down and go like oh these are all games that i've already seen before and and, and so i don't know that's that's been interesting but i guess you know a lot of the stuff's going to come out on pc and and all that stuff there's obviously multiple platforms for for that sort of stuff but yeah i don't you know it's it's i don't really have i still don't i don't have the room in this room i have more room potentially in this room not at the moment um but uh but yeah this room could work i think my long-term goal is i want to try to set up uh, a dedicated office space you know in like a shed or you know like build something build something out back and uh and put in like here's a big studio and this is going to be enough room for me to set up an index and actually do that shit for reals um and yeah i don't know like I, compromising to the like seated stationary experience all that sort of stuff just at some point that's just not fun for me anymore so especially with the games that you see like oh these are there's just a lot of a lot of really kick-ass movement and and stuff i could be doing like it just doesn't you know doesn't work out um so that's the PC Gamer Show. That was a lot. That was a lot, baby. That was like... That System Shock trailer was very cool. Um, and I'm trying to think what else stood out over the last two hours. And my mind has to... Oh, Demon School. Demon School, of course. Yes. Demon School looks looks fucking cool. Um, and yes, and Fake Goldeneye, the, the level editor, campaign editor, it seems like that could be really cool. Um, in the uh, Fake Goldeneye thing, it's a System Shock demo. Right on. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll grab that. Maybe I'll grab that. Give that a look. Um, but yeah, so uh, thanks uh, for for hanging out. Um, thanks for hanging out today. We're we're just about wrapped up. Um, if there's any more questions before we before we uh, before we bounce here, um, then uh, you know, let me know. I am gonna see uh, Capcom things tomorrow. Uh, we'll check out uh, we'll check out Capcom on Monday, and uh, and yeah, see what they have. I mean, they're gonna have uh, you know they're gonna have Dragon's Dogma two maybe that might be cool, um, and you know Dark the, the new Dark Stalkers and and uh, all that sort of stuff of course. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's uh that that PC gaming show turned my head into mush. Um, to be honest, like I I'm I'm like trying to think like what happened over the last two hours, and a lot of that information is just now gone. <laughs> um, but yeah, Demon School looked rad. Um, System Shock looks really cool. Capcom says they're only gonna have announced games. Okay, uh huh, interesting. I wonder if they'll reveal a character there because they you know. If they'll try to do something like that, like here's here's one more. I mean, they all leaked anyway. Um, yeah, oh, right, and the Arma, the the crazy Arma interview, right? Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, what's the schedule? So we'll we'll take a look at Capcom tomorrow afternoon, and then um, you know we'll podcast on Tuesday. I got to figure out a time for that uh, with the now. Um, how home home damage I have to deal with here with I'm 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 going to literally turn this stream off and then probably turn this vacuum cleaner on and try to suck some more water out of the carpet um and uh and yeah and then I got to figure out um 
We've got some some doctors and dentist appointments and some other stuff coming up here in the next couple of weeks. So the schedule's weird for a little bit. I will post the schedule on Patreon when it's uh, when I've got it locked down. Um, but yeah, head over to patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstman for updates on that. Uh, if you're already in there, then you know the, I've been using the event stuff on the Discord to to point out that stuff as well. But yes, we will uh, we'll we'll be back here together again tomorrow afternoon to take a look at uh, what Capcom has to show. I'm going to send you off in the direction of one Will Smith uh, because he's he's live and streaming. Uh, tell Will I said hi, everybody, and uh, and uh, have a good raid. Join hashtag join the raid Viking Raiders the Viking experience so on and so forth. And uh, I'll see everybody tomorrow. Have a good one.